Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? International Space Station is absolutely ready for the event. Clinton Global Initiative, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Clinton Global Initiative. How do you hear me? I have you loud and clear. Station, please stand by for President Clinton. Okay, Jeff, we should have... Uh I'd like to ask our resident astronaut, that is the one who's here, he's been in space three times, but decided to stay on Earth with us today. <laughs> Colonel Katie Coleman, are you here? Let's give her a big hand. <laughs> How are you? Now, this says we have a minute until the space station. No, now it says it's live and available. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we're too busy to call Reed. Are we? <laughs> well, I don't know. Let's see. Hey, Katie, I can hear you. I can hear you. <laughs> well, I know y'all have been tweeting. I wanted them all to myself for a little bit. That is Reed Wiseman. Tell him hello, everybody. Can you hear us? I think so. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, we, hear we hear you loud and clear up here on the space station. We hear you loud and clear up here on the space station. What do you want Americans back on Earth to know about the space station, about the role of governments and businesses from more than 15 countries who produced it? And what good is it today? What are you doing up there that we should care about and be grateful for? Well, that's a super question, uh, and really, what I what I want everyone to know is just what a unique and amazing place this is that we have up here. Countries from around the world came together about 15 years ago and built this orbital outpost, this amazing scientific research facility that we're living on today. And uh, and really, the research that we can do up here, when you remove gravity from the equation. It always has some sort of odd, unique, and sometimes game-changing outcome. And just uh, just yesterday, my German crewmate Alex Gerst, he actually grappled a U.S.-built SpaceX spacecraft, which is attached just behind me now. And we've spent the last two days just going crazy with the science on board. And this is science that's going to have a huge impact down the road. So we're alive and well, and this is a great facility up here. Something that I, I like to tell people is that, uh, you know, up in space, we're really, we're very far away. We're far away enough to have the big picture, and yet we're close enough to, to make a difference. And people often think that the things that we do up in space have to do with just space, but there's experiments like Reed is actually wearing. I can see some familiar and I'll try to say beloved equipment right now. He's doing an experiment. Um, we do a lot of uh, data collection. Some things, things like osteoporosis, losing bone, happens to us 10 times faster than it happens to, say, a 70-year-old woman down here on the ground that has osteoporosis. And because it happens so quickly to us up there, it's very measurable and allows us to take measurements and learn how that process works. So that knowledge comes right back down here, down to Earth. Now, fortunately, we've also learned some countermeasures to prevent that. And uh, unfortunately, the, the bad news is it's exercise. I think we all need to exercise for the rest of our lives. You know, <laughs> you know, uh, when we finished the space station when I was president, I spent a lot of your tax money on it if you're an American. I <laughs> know if you'll forgive me. And I had to personally approve the oldest astronaut ever going up, John Glenn, who first went up in 1961 and then went up at the age of 77. And I approved it. And I sent an email to him in outer space. We wanted to study the effects of space travel and weightlessness on the aging process. But I don't want you to age too much on the osteoporosis front. So I think we should take a selfie and email Reed, and that way you've emailed Reed Two. Wiseman in space Let's as well, it. not only John Glenn. So we're going to turn around so we don't, uh, we're not going to look at you. We're going to have you in our picture, Reed. Let's see. Okay. Are you smiling, Reed? Yeah. Smile, Reed. Here's <laughs> one more. Okay. And uh, 
I'll go ahead and email this to Reed if that's okay. That's a good deal. He'll have it in about Reed, five look, minutes. Before we have to get off, what do you want our group to know about what you see and what you've learned about the Earth's environment by being out of sight and looking out, out in outer space, looking down on it? I'd say uh, there are no words to describe that first glimpse that you have as a human being when you get to look back on your planet. And for me, it was about 120 days ago when I first looked out my spacecraft window right after launch, and, uh, and I got to see that, that tiny, thin, 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 impossibly thin blue atmosphere that covers our Earth. And it's, it's within that that every living creature survives on our planet. And then once you get up onto the space station and, and you get to spend months up here, you realize just how incredibly dynamic our Earth is. And it's a beautiful living organism. And uh, I think that right there captures my feeling, my emotion, uh, looking back at our planet. You want to say anything about that? Well, it's, it's a really special view. And to me, the fact that you can look down and see the whole planet, it, it's almost hard to feel as if you're from any particular country. And I think that's actually what we're all here about today, is that it's one place, and we're all from here. <laughs> So, what's next for the space hey, program? Katie, if I, if I can, I just, I'd like to bring in Alex, uh, my... I figured since we're all one, one, uh, one Earth, that uh, this is my, my crewmate, uh, Alex Gerst, and we have a Russian crewmate, Max Sarayev, who's down busy right now. We have a vehicle coming up tomorrow uh, that I'll have a new, a new crew of three on board. So he's down there preparing. So if Alex could just say hi real quick. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Katie. Uh, it's, my, it's my pleasure to talk to you today. And uh, I've already listened in. Uh, it was uh, great to hear what, what Reed said. And I can only add to that. that it's, uh, it's an amazing view that we have from up here and an, an amazing laboratory that uh, was built in an international effort, like the most complex uh, machine that humanity ever built. And we do science that we could otherwise not do, science that was enabled by that big effort uh, internationally. And um, it's my honor and my pleasure to take part in that. Thank you, and thank you for your service. I mean, I know you're going to have to sign off in a minute, but where do you, what do you think the next frontier in space is? What's, what's the most important thing we could do that would advance life on Earth if we found out certain things in outer space? Well, sir, I think, I think the simplest answer to that is we keep going. Whether it's the moon, an asteroid, Mars, sending uh, unmanned robotic missions out to the moons of Saturn and Jupiter, the key is we're, we're human beings and we gotta keep on going. We gotta dare to dream big, uh, try to do the impossible, and the discoveries that, we'll, we'll make discoveries that we don't even know are out there. And I think that's the big thing, we gotta keep pressing forward. I think we actually have until uh, 22 after by our clock down here with you. Can you all talk about, this is an international space station. There's 15 countries officially. There's, I don't know, 90 or so, or, um, you know, anyone given time doing experiments up there. But how do you get these countries all actually working together? Can you all talk about sort of the, there's the big government level and then there's the weather level that we're at, even though we're up high on the station, where you really make things work. And can you all just talk about how it really works? So, so, Katie, that's, that's a great question. And I would say the way I would answer that, we, we're operators up here. But more than that, we're friends. And the three of us up, up here right now, we're all great friends. And really, when the rubber hits the road, we've got an American, a German, and a Russian who come together, and we just work to get the job done. And, and I think in the end, that's really what happens with these international cooperations. And that's what I really love about this. I have two best friends that I'll keep in touch with for the rest of my life, and then all the trainers. I really thousands of people across the world that I've met on this, on this journey. And, uh, and we're all great friends now. So when you, when you get down right down to the bottom of people are people, we want to we get the job done, and we want to have fun doing it. 
You've convinced me that the answer to the political gridlock we have in America <laughs> is to send the Congress to meet in the space station. <laughs> You're great. You know, sir, there are usually round trips, though. Do you want it that way or you want the one way? No, no, no. I, <laughs> no, if, if I were to say one way, then I'd have to say who stays and who goes. And, <laughs> I don't want to be a hypocrite. I'm, I'm happy for it to be a two-way trip, but obviously something happens to you up there. <laughs> we need more people back on Earth who've actually been there. Well, and, you know, here up in space, we, we basically cross all these frontiers. Oh. <laughs> and there, you know, it still cracks me up. It's like, well, it's like leading the life of Peter Pan up there. And, I mean, and we're, you know, we're laughing at um, Reed do his somersault, and, and we want to see Alex do one, too. Um, but... It just tells you about all the possibilities that are up there. I mean, they're up there on a frontier, on the frontier, and we don't know <laughs> what they're going to do next. We don't know what liquids are going to do up there. We don't know what the human body's going to do up there. And we go up there knowing that we might fail, that we're going to make mistakes, we're going to have experiments that aren't successful, and yet the possibilities are what drive us the possibilities of doing these new things, and you say, you know, what's next? You know, we're not going to be on Mars unless we do things like the educational initiatives that you're talking about. And up there, as astronauts, we're often, I think, um, inspirational for education, and we will use every single bit of that because we need it for the future. Think we'll ever leave our solar system? Absolutely. Me too. <laughs> Me too. One or two more minutes with them. Yep. We have about one or two more minutes with them, I think. Yeah, we got another minute or two. Is there anything else you want to tell us? To support the space program? <laughs> tell us about your favorite and your least favorite experiment. You know, no, that's, that's a difficult question because... Uh-oh. Oh, there no. they go. You know, that's my Give fault. them a hand. Weren't they great? <laughs> That's okay. Well, so we're going to Mars someday where there might have been life at one time, right? We're going to find out. You know, it's a combination of robots and humans. You know, we've got a robot up there on the space station. We have robots going to Mars. I personally would like them to go and figure out how things are first. Before, I mean, we need to know before we send humans. And we have plans in place. It takes a while to put those plans, to, for those plans really to reach fruition. And something that's been interesting to me is that people need to see something to believe it. And maybe that will help you know, when people are thinking about why initiatives are successful. When you see a rocket launch in person, which I think you have, there's something amazing that when that happens, and you just, there's something in you that knows that that's really, really big. And if you don't see that, you're not so sure there's a space program. Well, we are launching from different places. We have a space station living up, um, we have six people usually living up in space, three more launching tomorrow from Kazakhstan. So those things are happening, but it's not, when you don't actually get to see the evidence of it, people are excited because of last week's announcement that announcing our new commercial carriers, Boeing and SpaceX, that will build new capsules to bring us to the space station. And then suddenly people realize that we do indeed have a space program. We have one. We're going places as a planet. And I think that if we keep in mind how to keep people inspired with uh, real, real visions, maybe we'll get there. Thank you. Let's give her a hand. She's great. Thank you. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. Thank you, Clinton Global Initiative. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.